So I just got a comment asking if I can make the matrix effect using only zeros and ones. And since I've already done the matrix effect, I think I've actually made two tutorials for this. I thought let's do something a bit different. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make a grid of just zeros and ones or any two letters, numbers, whatever, uh, that will alternate and kind of look matrixy, but there's none of that rainbow rain stuff going on. But uh, this is a super simple uh, node network to make and it should teach you uh, quite a bit. So I guess let's get right into it. So uh, with the cube in full screen, we're going to go into geometry nodes and we're just immediately going to turn it into a grid. The idea being this grid is going to host a bunch of points, meaning the more points we have, the more, you know, stuff we have going on. Uh, this grid is going to host a bunch of points. Each of those is either going to be a zero or a one. And we're going to make a basic rule uh, that decides that randomly and alternates it in a way that looks interesting. So. I want my screen to be, you know, HD. So it's going to be 1.778 is the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And then finally, we want to make sure our points are distributed equivalently. So for every, I don't know, it only accepts integers. So for every like 10 points, let's say, uh, we need to multiply this number by 1.778. And now our aspect ratio should be always square, no matter what, as you can see. Um, okay. So let's pick a number. We can always change this later, but let's say this is our resolution. Again, for each of these points that compose it, like uh, this point right here and another point, uh, we want to instance something. Well, uh, what do we want to instance? We want to instance the number zero and one. So because we're in geometry nodes, let's just import that in using curve to string, string to curve, really. So one of these is going to be a zero. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, we have a zero. We center it so that we don't have any issues. And the other one is going to be a one. So zero or one, <laughs> perfect. Uh, only other thing I'm gonna do to this is I'm just gonna change the font to be something more interesting. So zero, one, zero, one. For either of these, if we want them instanced, we wanna make sure they're visible. They actually have some geometry. So I'm going to fill the curve. So boom, actually let's do that in solid view. So this is before, nothing there, after. And same thing for this. So again, the way I want you to think about it is we just have now created uh, two options. So is it shift P? Yeah. So this is option one and this is option two, each of them in their own uh, frame. To pick between them is uh, what gets, you know, that's the interesting part. So we're gonna instance on points because again, we have a grid of points and we wanna say for each of these points, for each of these points that uh, put something interesting. Uh, if we were to put the zeros, and scale them down, 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 down. You see we get a, a grid of zeros. If instead we do it with the ones, we get a grid of ones. How do we do either or? Well, you do see this uh, pick instance button, so I'm gonna enable it, uh, but it can't pick between our two options because we're only feeding in one. So if we take them and we join them, not the way I just did that, but we join these. I wonder why if they're in frames, they don't like to be joined. If we take them and join them, so now they're both here. If we look at the uh, data, you can see there's a one and a zero, and there's two instances overlapping. If this is what we feed in, and we pick the instance, so before, after, uh, you could see this is what it's doing. It's uh, selecting the instance based on the index, which is why it's going rows of zeros, rows of one, rows of zeros, rows of ones, okay? So again, we have two options. We're merging them, and we're saying of these merged, pick one or the other. Now the rule for which to pick should be random so that it looks random. So for the instance index, which is what it's using, I'm gonna use a random value. So that already breaks it up. And you might be thinking, okay, to get this to animate, of course, we just connect this to the seconds. So every second it flickers. And that is the case. Um, however, you can see why this kind of looks boring. It's like there's a full screen update every 24 frames or whatever frame rate we're at, right? So it kind of looks boring. So somehow we want to proceduralize or randomify, make it, make it random, the uh, time input that the random value is using. Here's how we're going to do that. We're actually going to use another random value. So what I'm going to say is time is not going to flow at the same speed for every single one of these points because it's a field. So if we multiply this by 10, you can see it's updating very quickly. If we update it by two, much more slowly. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say only um, update it. 
update it randomly for each one is what I'm trying to say uh, but with the float between zero and one and let's see what that looks like. So now you could see it's updating, but not everywhere all at once, which is what makes it look like, oh, it's like updating at one place at one point and another. It, lo it looks much more interesting in my opinion. And if you bring these numbers close together, it will look more like everything's updating kind of continuously. So you get a bit of a choice here. Um, I'm going to change the seed number on that. Um, so I'm just going to go zero to one. So some things are going to flicker quite fast. Some things are not. And now that we have our grid, so this is kind of the essence of it, right? We've made a function that chooses. We could literally swap one of these for the letter A, and it's still going to work with the same logic, right? Uh, the rest of this is just making it look a bit better. So let's do that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to realize instances. This is just for the material we're going to be making. It's going to let us uh, do certain things that are easier. And we're going to set material to a material. So now the question is, uh, what material do we want to make? Because we're at the home stretch now. So it should be kind of this glowing green thing that also looks pixelated with a bit of randomness. All of these things. So I'm going to start off with an emission. This is just a base. It's not what it's going to look like. So green emission, that's pretty strong. We could add some bloom. Okay, that's a start. Uh, why does it look shitty? Because it's green everywhere. There's no pixelation, I think. So we're going to start off with a brick texture. A brick texture, once we bring up the scale, is gonna, and this is why we realized instances, by the way, is gonna kinda let us make a pixelation effect. So I'm gonna make sure both of these colors are either black or white. I want the size to be one by one, and let's bring down the scale, or bring it up rather. So I'm just basically taking my brick texture, and I'm morphing it until it looks the way that I want it to, which is this uh, pixelated thing. Uh, let's see. So it's still looking like the uh, wrong aspect ratio. This is probably because it's not using our object coordinates. There we go. And uh, you can see, wow, we have a kind of a pixelation effect. Uh, the way you incorporate this is you put it inside the uh, strength. So it's glowing. Maybe we want to invert that. But uh, it's glowing, uh, but only where the cells are. Which will make it subtly look a bit better. Another thing we can do is it shouldn't be that um, everything is glowing with the same brightness. Like there should be randomization for that as well. Uh, so using the geometry node, using random per island, which will not work in Eevee, it seems. Where it definitely works in cycles. What it does is it gives you random number between 0 and 1 for each uh, instance, which would not work, by the way. If we go back to geometry nodes, this trick should not work if we do not have realized instances. So that's why it's so important. Um, cause it makes it actual geometry that we can look at the islands for. Uh, but this could be used as a kind of like a strength multiplier so that not everything glows with the same brightness. So I'm just multiplying it by this number. So let's see before, after, so already a lot more visual interest. If you want some of them to not be as weak, you could send it through a color ramp where the bottom isn't all the way black. So now you can see before and after. And then final trick, this is basically the random value of the shader world. I'm just going to send this through a white noise uh, where the seed lets us uh, change which ones are glowing and not glowing as intensely. Okay? Super simple. Um, final thing, I don't want them all to be exactly green. I want variation for that as well. So I'm going to send it through another random uh, white noise to shuffle our random number. So again, this is just shuffling our random inputs. And I want this to control the color. So I'm going to send this through a hue saturation where it's going to affect the hue of our green color. So some of them are, as you can see, some of them are going to be shifted purple, some of them blue. Um, but to make this less uh, of a variety, to make it less of a variety, you want to bring down the multiplication so that they all kind of converge. When it's zero, they're all the same color and set the addendum to 0.5. What this is saying is we're randomizing our hue. We want to say at baseline, it should be 0.5. So just add 0.5 because that's what this number should be, 0.5. And then start adding some variation. If we do it a little, it's only going to go to turquoise and blue. You do it a lot, it's going to go much further. And then use this as the color. And maybe this is a bit too far. I'll divide it by two. So you can see it's not all green and it doesn't all look the same. And uh, it's updating. At least, yeah, it is updating, not very quickly, and we can change that with geo nodes, but 
you can see it is updating with our uh, custom material. So really this is just the thing that you render out and you stick it on a screen. Again, it's not the matrix raindrop effect, but you can see how it's similar, but you could use this for a whole bunch of other stuff. In fact, you could use a map to say uh, which instance you're picking and do something more interesting with that. Uh, but with all that being said, I'm not I'm not salty about a 10 minute tutorial. So hopefully you guys enjoyed what you learned today. If so, I just want to mention super quick, uh, there's a link in the description for Patreon. It is literally the best way to fund this channel and the CG Matter channel. The reason I'm able to do this for free consistently, all this is because I'm getting revenue from there. So if you want to support what I do, even a dollar goes a long way. And I want to thank all 700 some active patrons. Okay. Now, if you're interested in joining the Patreon, my 3D printer is crapping out, but if you're interested in joining the Patreon, there's three things you're going to get in return beyond just helping both channels. One, you're going to get um, early access to tutorials. You could have seen this video early, and that's how people comment before the video comes out. Second of all, you get blend files. So this, I'm going to make a blend file that you can just download. You don't need to make it yourself. And there's hundreds of blends at this point. I've been doing th this since 2019. And then thirdly, exclusive tutorials. I did uh, two of those in the month of April. Those are for patrons only. I did one about the compositing process for the back rooms and another one about that meditation video. I did the particles for it. So if any of that interests you or you just want to support the channels, thank you so much. That is the place to do it. And uh, other than that, for everybody, thank you for making it to the end of the tutorial, keeping that retention span high, audience retention. And uh, that's it for me. See ya.